Sunshine Radio, y'all. It's your girl, Moo Legend. We out here with our very special guest, Chalk Bar. What's going on? What's up? What's up? What's up, party people? In the place to be, this is your boy, Shavar, the God. <laughs> Shavar, the God. Shavar for the people. Shavar for the people. Because we for the people, baby. Come on, people. And we are here. That's right. With Time to Shine Radio. You see it. And uh, it is what a blessing it is to be Come in the on. building. Come on, blessings. <laughs> I'm here with y'all today. Yes, thank you so much for coming. So introduce yourself, uh, Shavar, to everybody. Uh, well, my name is Shavar, mm -hmm. and um, I am uh, uh, a, I guess, an influencer okay. here in Atlanta. You guess? Because you got a lot going on. I'm just um, bio, I bad, you know. You know, I'm just, just out here in the streets trying to be an inspiration to the people. To the people. Shavar and, the uh, people. you know, for those that, um, like myself, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, people that can identify with uh, me and 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 uh, the things I believe in. You okay. know, uh, it may not be for everybody. I'm a strong believer in everybody has a message. It might be for one person. It might be for a million people. Whoever mm -hmm. it's for, they gonna receive it. He gonna receive it. Okay, I love that. Yes. And so you originally from Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, I grew up in Charlotte. Okay, you grew up. But I was born in New York, in okay. Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, be fair. Yeah, I, went, I moved to Charlotte as a kid. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And now you've been in Atlanta how long? I've been here eight years. Eight years. And you have done so much. Have I? <laughs> yes. This bio I read. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I've done a few things. A few things. I have. Okay. Shavar for the people. So eight years in Atlanta. I have. Comedian. I, I, have, I have done comedy. Okay. And then rapper. I do rap a little bit. Okay, we gotta get some bars before we leave this thing. I okay. might spit a hot 16. <laughs> okay, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> real estate. Yeah, so I have been in real estate for 20 years. 20 years, the financer, right? Fin I, right, real estate finance. Mm. Well, so um, one of the things that I'm really big on mm. um, is I feel like everybody should learn about real estate. I don't think that people understand how much of our rights and our citizenship is based in real estate wow our constitution was originally written for mm -hmm. white male landowners Ooh, okay. so you know um a lot of our laws are rooted in real estate whether we know it or not mm -hmm. um, especially in our community we need to learn that because you know a lot of the issues that we have and a lot of the things that we complain about mm -hmm. comes from the fact that there's not a lot of ownership in our community sometimes wow. and ownership is the key to making sure that you can secure those rights Okay. Um, as well as real estate is one of the pillars of how to move up in a capitalist society. Ooh, there's four there's four ways to move up into a capitalist society. Mm -hmm. It starts with education. Yes, sir. That's the first way okay. to, to move yourself up. Um, the second way is access to capital and credit. Mm. Right, understanding how to gain access to additional funds and yes. you know use other people's money as they say, um, and how to have a good credit score. Wow. Right, and how to use that and leverage that. The third way is real estate, okay. because um, they ain't making no more land, okay. right? That's the fastest way to build wealth. <laughs> yes, it's land. In, in in the world, it's to, it's to own land, That's it. right? Yes. And then the fourth way is insurance. Now, mm -hmm. insurance Drop can be for you, mm -hmm. right? But it's really more to leave that legacy and have that generational wealth mm -hmm. through insurance. Okay. Even though there are insurance policies that do build mm -hmm. uh, cash value, so you can you know gain wealth through insurance wow. um, while you're living. But that's really more of the I'm gonna leave a legacy type thing. Okay, no. But real estate is one of those pillars. No, absolutely. Yes. What made you get into that? So, um, I had a cousin of mine who, since the '90s, has been was one of the top agents. She she uh, passed away a few years ago, but um, she was one of the top agents in Charlotte. Mm. And um, she owned a real estate agency, uh, okay. black woman owned okay. real estate agency, and uh, had up to about 15 people working for her at one point. And um, she was just always somebody who I looked up to. You know, when I was a kid, mm -hmm. you know, I, I've always been a bigger kid. And I played sports, mm -hmm. you know. And my grandmother used to always tell me, you know, hey, just because you're a bigger guy doesn't mean you have to play sports. Okay. So you're smart, too. You know, you can be successful in business. Come on. And, um, you know, I was always, you know, looked up to my cousin. And, and um, you know, it was something I was always interested in. I got into business right out of college. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing it ever since. Ever since. Yeah. Wow. 20 years. 20 years. Wow. I've been out of school. I graduated college in 2003. Okay, yeah, me too. Turn up. <laughs> there you go, okay. right? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> HBCU too. Yeah, come on, fam. You. That's right. Yeah. Barber Scotia. Uh, okay. Barber Scotia College. Yes, sir. Yes. I love it. I love it. Because you have so many accolades and so many things that you do. And you also recently told me that you're um, a consultant. 
So about 10 years ago, I did get into, well, actually a little bit longer than that because I worked for AT&T Business Solutions. Okay. But um, after I left AT&T, I got into business consulting. Okay. Which taught me a whole different side of um, maneuvering mm. in, you know, the, the capitalist American space. Okay. Um, I learned a lot because the type of consulting that I do or, you know, did was cha- was, was considered change management. Okay. Um, it's in the, in the HR space. Mm. And a lot of what we would do is uh, what's called a top down. So okay. a top down is when somebody comes into your company and they start from the top down uh, and they okay. work their way all the way to from the, the CEO, the president mm. down to the guy who's sweeping the floor wow. and they try and they find out where the inconsistencies are mm. and they find out how to be able to That's better dope. manage yeah. uh, and get more out of your human capital is mm-hmm. the term that they use. Right. Human capital. Human capital. Right. So um, <laughs> top down. <laughs> right. Take notes. <laughs> you know, um, so um, I learned a lot. Okay. In that industry, so yeah, you were, you was on the road here, and so now I hear you was on TV One. I was on TV One. <laughs> okay. I was on TV One. Okay. How was that experience? What did you do on TV One? It was cool. It was cool. You know, um, so I was on a TV show called The One. The One. Uh, with Kirk and Tammy Franklin. For sure. Um, they took seven uh, single people, mm-hmm. seven single women, and seven single men. Mm-hmm. We all moved into a house okay. together. Um, to get to know one another. Um, but of course, you know, as a male dater, I was there for one of the young ladies. Mm-hmm. And of course, the young ladies were there for uh, one of the, the one of the brothers that was there. Okay. And, um, you know, it was a good experience. Mm-hmm. What did you learn? I learned a lot about myself, actually. Okay, really? I think I learned um, that what I thought I wanted in a relationship, I probably didn't <laughs> really want. Okay. I think I learned that um, some of my priorities and what I, you know, priorities in relationships um, were kind of skewed. Mm-hmm. And I think I learned that, or I think I know that for a fact that I learned that I have been pouring a lot in the situation I probably shouldn't have. Okay. Over time. Mm. And uh, yeah. Okay. You know, I learned a lot about myself. You did. Time, did. Okay. Do you think if you didn't go on that show, would you still have eventually figured out what you learned? Um. Or just probably would have took a little more time. I probably would have. Okay. But I will say that being dropped into that microcosm, you know, because the thing about the show is it, it was like a microcosm of dating in, in Atlanta. Okay. Like, it, it, it was, you know, you had the women on that show, no matter who The Bachelor would have picked on that show, mm-hmm. there wasn't one woman on there that would have been a bad choice. Uh, right? Okay. And they all had different types of you know, you had, you know, women that were business owners. Mm-hmm. You had women that were in the entertainment business. You had women that were in the business world, corporate world, you know. Oh, so, types. you know, you had different types. You had all the different types, mm-hmm. right? And the same thing with the guys. Like, mm-hmm. you had guys that were business owners. You had guys that were in the corporate world. Um, you know, you had guys that came from a good background, guys that came from a rougher background. Ah, you know, so you had the whole microcosm of everybody. Mm-hmm. And the thing that I learned was that everybody was there looking for love. Wow. Genuinely, like, people will say... Well, was it fake because it was reality TV? But <laughs> People always ask that question, don't they? <laughs> they do always ask that question. But I can honestly say that I don't think that anybody came there um, with disingenuous um, uh, intentions. Intentions. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, well, that's interesting. So you glad you went on there? I'm glad I went on there. Okay. Yeah. Was it good networking at least? Um. Well, I will say this, that as far as the networking piece of it, it probably hasn't really changed a lot. Okay. Um, as far as the networking piece, because I always, I've always been a big networker anyway. Mm-hmm. But I will say that it, it, it did give us some additional notoriety mm. that wasn't there before. Okay. You For know. Sure. Um, did your followers go up? <laughs> not a lot. Really? I probably gained maybe a couple thousand followers from the show. I was, I was already at maybe twenty thousand followers when I got on the show. Okay. I think I'm at maybe like twenty two thousand now, twenty three thousand. Okay. So yeah. That's still a lot. That's still a lot though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, somebody was looking somebody at. Somebody was watching. Right. You know. <laughs> Okay, and your new position at this school. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so that's exciting. So um, I just um, took a director position with a nonprofit. It's a national nonprofit, but, uh, you know, with the Atlanta branch. Okay. And what we do is we offer free tech training. Tech training. To underserved markets. So about 80% of our um, learners are uh, black or brown. Mm Mm-hmm. Probably about sixty percent are, are, are young black men. Okay. And out of the uh, the the additional uh, the additional learners, about thirty percent are uh, single black women. Wow. Or, or single black mothers. Okay. So wow. um, 
we do a lot of work in our in our community. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great program. You actually end up with a nationally certified certification. It costs you zero dollars. Like it zero. costs nothing for you to go. Right. Right. We do job placement. Mm. We do personal development. All the way down to even if you need clothes to wear to your interview, we have a clothes closet. Wow. So, um, yeah. Okay. It's a great position. I feel good about what I'm doing. No, absolutely. And so the age range in this school starts at 18. So here's the crazy part about it. Now, a lot of our uh, the people that come to our, our, our school are mm. younger, okay. you know, 18, 19, 20, but there's no age range. Ah, uh, okay. You know, so if you're in a position where you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, and you're trying to start over, you've been in, in another industry, you want to get into tech, mm -hmm. this is the perfect opportunity for you to get into tech because you can come and go here for free. For free. And what's the requirements? The requirements that you be 18. Okay. And that you have a high school diploma or GED. So you don't need no other special nothing. That's no. it. Okay. So the, 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 the types of positions that we focus on helping our learners to get mm -hmm. are non-degreed positions. Uh. However, if you're a degree or someone who does have a degree, mm -hmm. that degree is only going to help you even more because now you have a tech certification on top of it. Ooh, okay. Talking about double the fun. Yeah, there you okay, go. Okay, I like that. How long is the program? It's three months. Three months. That's so it's 12 it. weeks. Wow. So you'll come in, um, you'll start uh, three months later, you'll walk out there with a uh, uh, you know a, tech, a national tech certification, whether mm -hmm. it's in um, IT support or cybersecurity or coding or uh, any of those classes that we offer mm -hmm. and um you know hopefully um we want you to have a job when you walk out of here but you know within about a year we want to have 80 percent of our constituency placed in a, okay. in a in a position that's amazing and you guys are located downtown atlanta downtown atlanta 290 okay. street wow yeah okay but even if you're not in the city of atlanta we probably have a, a campus in your in city because we're in 22 cities okay 22 cities 22 cities we have one in charlotte we got them in newark we got four locations in New York City. Mm. Um, we got a, a new location out of L.A. We got a new location out of Houston. Mm. Location in uh, in um, Dallas, Boston. Wow. Um, you know Chicago. And what is the name of this school? Prescolis is the name of the school.